Eastern. From NBC News in Washington, this is Meet the Press with Tim Russert. Our issues this Sunday, only 65 days until the midterm elections. The Democrats must gain six seats to take control of the U.S. Senate. This fall, we will once again present debates between the candidates in some of the hottest Senate races across the country. And this morning, we kick off our 2006 Senate debate series with one of the most closely watched races of the year, Pennsylvania, where incumbent Republican Senator Rick Santorum faces off against Democratic challenger, State Treasurer Bob Casey. Rick Santorum, Bob Casey, welcome both to Meet the Press. Thank you, Thank you Tim. Thank Let's you. go right to it, the war in Iraq. Mr. Casey, you're the challenger. You told the Philadelphia Inquirer August 2005 the following. Casey said he would have voted for the war considering the evidence at the time and supported the spending bills that funded the effort. Knowing what you know today, would you still have voted for the war? Tim, before I begin my answer, I just want to make a note of a loss in Pennsylvania. Mayor Bob O'Connor uh, in the city of Pittsburgh passed away. We want to express, I think we share that uh, here today, we want to express our condolences to his family. Tim, on the war in Iraq, if, if, if a lot of Americans knew uh, now, if, if they knew then what they know now, they, w they would have thought that this war was uh, the war that shouldn't have been fought based upon the misleading of this administration. Here's what I think has to happen in Iraq. So today. you would not vote for it today? Based upon the information that we have now, I think that, that a lot of Americans would have serious doubts. I'm not sure there, there'd even been a vote on the war in Iraq that early in the... But, but in 05, you said you'd vote for it. Would you today in 06 vote for it? Based upon the evidence that was presented then, yes. Which I think has been, was misleading, and I think it was faulty. The but today, was today faulty. is no. Today you would vote no. To, but, but if we knew then what we know now, sure, I think there wouldn't have been a vote. And I think people would have changed. Let me also ask about the funding. Uh, earlier in the week, I had said that Democrats had not sought to cut off the funding. In fact, Congressman Jim McGovern of Massachusetts and 17 other Democrats have called for the End the War in Iraq Act of 2005 to cut off funding for the war. Would you vote to cut off funding? I don't think we can, Tim. I'm not ready to abandon this mission. I think a lot of Americans are not either. What has to happen in Iraq is what you've, you've not seen. We need new leadership. We don't need a deadline, a timeline. We need new leadership. And part of that leadership, I think, involves a couple of things. Let me just go through four or five of them. One of them is a question of accountability. Our troops have been accountable with their lives, and yet a lot of politicians in Washington haven't been held accountable. You know the, the work of Thomas Ricks, who wrote a book recently based upon his, his work at the Washington Post and the, the Wall Street Journal. In that book, he lays the blame squarely on the Congress, failing to hold the Bush administration accountable. Accountability, I think, means replacing Donald Rumsfeld. Rick and I disagree on that. It means finding out how and whether we are allied to with regard to intelligence. The second thing we need, I think, in Iraq in terms of a new direction is to make sure that we have clear and measurable benchmarks, not just from the president, but from the Iraqis as well. What is the plan that the president can tell us about with regard to disarming the militias? What is the plan to bring oil production above the pre-war levels? All of that kind of accountability and clear benchmarks. And thirdly, I think what's happening in Iraq should tell us that we need to transform the mission on the ground. There's no reason why American soldiers have to continually lead uh, lead on the ground and, and go ahead of the Iraqis. The Iraqis need to take over and take on some of these street patrol, patrols in, in Baghdad and so many other places. And I think also, Tim, I'll conclude with this. We need to rebuild the American military. Uh, we need to have more special forces. I've called for a doubling in the number of special forces. Senator Santorum apparently doesn't agree with that. It's the right thing to do. And I would just ask Senator Santorum, Donald Rumsfeld, I've called for him to be replaced, Rick. Where do you stand on that? I'll be happy to start there. Uh, I think Secretary Rumsfeld has done a, a fine job as the Defense Secretary. And uh, the problems that uh, we are confronting are problems of an enemy uh, that's a very potent enemy, much more potent than I think anybody ever anticipated. Um, you know, we have a great game plan. Uh, we go just like a football team. You go in there, uh, you do your best. Uh, but the enemy has a vote. The enemy can react and change its tactics, and they have. And they've been very, very effective. Um, we need to go out there and continue uh, to fight this war 
on Islamic fascism, not just as my opponent likes to focus on just the war in Iraq. That's a front of a multi-front war in which we're fighting against an enemy that is a very dangerous enemy. As you know, Tim, I've been giving speeches, not just uh, in Pennsylvania, but here in Washington, uh, talking about the importance of focusing the American public on the uh, terrific um, uh, potency of the enemy that we face. This is an enemy that uses a tactic that is a very effective tactic against us called terror because they don't care about life and we do. And so when you, ha when you match up those forces, people who don't put on uniforms, people who are willing to die for their cause and want to die for their cause, it makes it a very difficult enemy to fight, one that we have not successfully uh, fought in the past, or I shouldn't say successfully, one we haven't fought in the past. So we have a very difficult enemy. We have an enemy that now is trying to get nuclear weapons in, in, the, in the form of Iran, and one that, uh, you know, we can ask all these questions about process and procedure, most of which I would argue have been answered already. Uh, the real tough questions is, how do you win this war? How do you go out and, and, and prosecute a war that successfully? And I've laid out a very clear vision on that. Uh, my opponent has not. Well, let me <clears throat> talk about a Pentagon report on Friday. Our ambassador to Iraq has said the principal problem is not foreign terrorists. It's sectarian violence, Sunni versus Shiite. The Pentagon report on Friday said this, sectarian violence is spreading in Iraq and the security problems have become more complex than at any time since the U.S. invasion in 2003, the Pentagon report said. Death squads and terrorists are locked in uh, mutually reinforcing cycles of sectarian strife. The last quarter, you know, has been rough, said Assistant Secretary of Defense Peter Rodman. The levels of violence are up. The sectarian quality of the violence is particularly acute and disturbing. This is Shiite versus Sunni, Iraqi versus Iraqi. Yeah. This is what the, do you do about that? that Stay makes, the course? That makes it more complex, uh, the fact that not only do the Sunnis and the Shia, uh, the, the radical uh, Sunni uh, terrorist groups, as well as nation states, Shia nation states like Iran, want to defeat the United States, and we've seen that very clearly articulated just yesterday about submitting uh, to, to their rule. And this but but the stay Sunnis. on Iraq, Senator. I, I'm coming back to it. But we can't, you can't ignore the fact that we are, we are fighting this war on multi fronts, and Iraq is simply a front. And Iran, which is, which is the principal stoker of this, uh, this Shia Sunni uh, sectarian violence, would love nothing more to see than the Iraqi democracy fail because of that. This is a tactic of Iran to disrupt the, uh, our, our efforts in Iraq by, in fact, trying to defeat the Sunnis. So there's, there's no question. This is a very complex war. But understand, at the, at the heart of this war is Iran. Iran is the, is, is the problem here. Iran is the one that's causing most of the problems in, in Iraq. It is causing most of the problems, uh, obviously, with Israel today. It is, it is the one funding these organizations and is the, is the uh, country that we need to focus on in this war against Islamic fascism. So Iran now has more influence in Iraq than they did before Saddam Hussein. Just understand. Is that true? Uh, I would say that they have influence in, 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 a, in a free country where you have an opportunity to express yourself, if you will. Yes, you can probably do right, more let, in that country than let, they would within a, dic, uh, a, a totalitarian let regime. Let me respond to that. Can I have a few minutes Please. to respond? A couple of things. First of all, what you just heard was Senator Santorum's long answer, which basically says, stay the course in Iraq. It's a completely different point of view. I think we've got to change the course and, and have new leadership. Part of that is that, that accountability I talked about. But stop, but stop he, there, Mr. Okay. Casey, because I think there's been an evolution in your thinking. Let me go back to April of 05. The Philadelphia Daily News said, quote, the key thing now is to finish the job. That's Bob Casey, quote unquote. October, some people think that pulling out is a good idea and a timeline is a good idea. I don't agree with that. We got more work to do uh, to make sure that we get it right. Then, in June of 06, Bob Casey said he doesn't believe U.S. troops should be removed from Iraq immediately, but should be by the end of the year. He said the country has a new government and it's time for the Iraqis to take a greater role in defending themselves. Should we finish the job or should we remove the troops by the end of the year? Tim, I've never favored a deadline in, in, in this whole campaign because we have to do everything we can to, to hold the administration accountable. And when, you're, when it's not going well, you, you see the, the Pentagon report uh, this pe just in the last couple of days. This thing is headed towards civil war. We don't know if it's there yet. We hope it's not. But when you have it heading in the wrong direction, you've got to have a new course. And, and so, so when John Kerry, the Democratic nominee in 2004, introduced legislation which says 
all troops out by July of 2007, Bob Casey votes no. Absolutely. Senator Santorum, leading up to the war in October of 2002, this is what Rick Santorum said. Saddam Hussein's regime, a serious and grave danger to the safety of the American people. Given the threat posed to the world by his weapons of mass destruction programs, would you now acknowledge that that was not correct? What I would say is that we have found weapons of mass 